All right. Hey, how we doing, so buddy? So, so you're not in the UK. You're you're in you're in like uh, somewhere somewhere deep in the jungle of uh, where they have some kind of uh, uh, <laughs> floral arrangement on that wallpaper. Buddy, it's it's hot. It's uh, 35, 35 degrees, man. It's in the nineties here. Thirty five. Living palm tree life. You, you did not need to tell me the 90s, uh, as I learned for many years of being in Toronto. 30 is no, hot. 30 is that hot. Was, that was more for the rest of the audience. But it was actually 40 in London today in the UK. With no air conditioning. So, so that brings up a story that I often tell. I told it here uh, in the gym where uh, when, when Wimbledon was on. And uh, when, when we went to Wimbledon uh, with Milos uh, a few years ago, uh, obviously, his biggest run was when uh, when he finished second. He, which uh, then the following year he is known as the the first runner up of the championship or something. It's some title. Uh, <laughs> and um, so so when when you're when you're at that level, uh, you 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 typically will will stay right around uh, the the what's it called all yeah. whites or whatever uh, all England yeah. whatever it's called. And yeah. so, the, 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 and because those, just like in golf or other individual sports, there's a, there's a crew, like there's, there's a lot of us that, uh, that yeah. these players will, will, will utilize. And um, the, you have to rent the house for the entire tournament, not knowing how long you're actually going to play. And obviously we, 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 did, we did, yeah, we did quite well, but these houses are, are very nice. Like this is a very well-to-do area of, of London. But you stay there because if you stay elsewhere in like these super nice, maybe Americanized hotels, the, the traffic is so unbearable that you could never get there in time. There's no, no air con- these There's no air conditioning in these houses. So whenever it was a couple of years ago, it was one of the hottest summers ever oh, in, no. in the UK. So so we ordered like like these industrial fans, like like you would see in like a warehouse. And they make this basically this dull roar that when, when they when they work, it's like it's like you're trying to dry out like a paint painted a room and you're trying to dry it out really fast. And good white uh, noise. Yeah, that, I was about to say it, it acted as as like a sleep you know aid to but that because it's it's true, like there's no air conditioning. I don't know that people here in America know that that uh, that there's no it's not a thing there. It's not a not a well, and the weird part is the flip side of that is everyone tells me it's so cold in Canada, but inside the house we, cool? have, we have we have insulation and cheap heating. So I've never worn more clothing indoors in my life than living in England than I did when I was in Canada. No, so so, the, the outside temperature and the inside temperatures always match over here. There's, well, there's the, no uh, there's no change. Oh, well, maybe because those houses were there first and they didn't have the uh, the same yeah. infrastructure. The, the, um, the, the, other, the other part of that story is like, um, I, and I'm sure this is part of the narcissism of being American, you think of New York City and London, because these are two of the most important cities in the world, you think they're on the same latitude. Yeah. Dude, London, London is like Winnipeg. Like, it's, 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 so if you tell somebody, if you tell somebody from New York, oh yeah, it's like Winnipeg, they're gonna think it's cold or it's very temperate during like two months out of the year. It's like above Winnipeg. It's, it's, it's like almost Alaska. London is almost even with Alaska in terms of the, the latitude. That's it, man. That's one of my favorite little trivia for the North Americans. Is like Toronto is the same latitude more or less as Bordeaux in the south of France, which just like blows people's minds because it's like, wait yeah. a minute. Yeah. You're, not, you're not throwing wine over there. How, how how many years now have have you have you been there? I remember you moved what 2015 or something like that. It was 2017, 2018. Uh-huh. Came over okay. to a sabbatical, help out with the family, and then yeah, kid number three, and a pandemic later, we're still over here. Uh, I think I think you're going to be there for a few more minutes. That's uh, it's, yeah, it seems yeah. to be, it, it's it's working it's working out for you. It is, yeah. The the uh, the, the the last time we talked too. Uh, it was nice weather here. I, I think I didn't have sleeves on my shirt. I, I went and rewatched our old stuff to see what we should talk about. I was I was jealous there, man. It was I feel like it was pretty cold over here when we had that conversation. I thought you were going to say you were jealous because I had yoked out traps or something. What's uh, what, what's the uh, what's the latest? You, 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 uh, what do you, you you so you you were you were in uh, you were in Canada for the last uh, window with with basketball? Yeah, so we're in uh, in Toronto. We had a nice little heat wave there. Mm-hmm. Getting the good old two a days in and uh, and yeah, home and home and away. As you know, the crazy FIBA schedule. It's a fly, yeah. fly all the way, 
to the islands for one game. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and, are you uh, able to? Uh, are you still able to treat people in Canada? You're still able to maintain your whatever credentials that you have. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. So it's been able to. You know, it's nice. Always nice to get back, especially to Toronto, and uh, catch up with people. You know, back to the clinic, and of course with 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 well, CB okay. and, and all the guys. And uh, yeah, man, it was good. Good window, two zero. Yeah, halfway home. Yeah, but a, a lot of a lot of what you do as a as a clinician, though, do you need to see people in person? Well, no, that's one of the things. Yeah, yeah. Before the pandemic, I was trying to move more towards remote consulting because you can really you know, when you're dealing with nutrition or even uh, mm -hmm. from a Functional health medicine. standpoint, nowadays you can really just, mm -hmm. you know, we got remote blood pressure monitors. We can do blood mm -hmm. tests anywhere. Um, yeah. So that's been kind of the cool shift, really, if you will, because now more organizations, teams, companies are realizing that actually it's it's a little easier, right? You can get a lot of touch points with someone without have them having to come into the clinic, find a parking space, do the whole rest yeah. of it. So, well, and it's not, it's not necessary. Now, if somebody well, wants and that's it just the thing, and right? they demand but it's not necessary. And, and, yeah. um, you know, so, so to, to do, you know, to, to provide, uh, high levels of nutrition advice or functional medicine, et cetera, or, you know, what am I missing? Um, you know, obviously, uh, many people in America, uh, have a, it's not that they, we, it's not that we don't have the word as an osteopath, but it's very, very different than what an osteopath in Canada or the UK or, or Europe, basically, um, an osteopath in America, is is closer to an al un, un, you know an allopathic you know position like they don't really yeah. I'm sure there are osteopaths that conduct themselves but they don't make they wouldn't make any money like in, in, yeah. in the American system um, whereas uh, I don't think there's I don't know I guess maybe an Asian medicine physician would be the closest to an osteopath in in the American model uh, uh, I, I don't know you know yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, well, it's interesting. Just the the osteo Cairo flip from the UK to, to America is almost like just well, the reverse. Uh, but a Cairo, I guess, would be very similar in terms of a traditional Cairo. I think. And now, if somebody wants to come at me, go ahead. See how that works out for you. But um, a <laughs> because because a traditional chiropractor would 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 be educated that they can solve all ten systems of the body via the spine and and via these these manual techniques to the spine. An osteopath is trained traditionally that some, somehow moving bones, uh, osteo, can, can solve all 10 systems of the body. Uh, yes. And quite frankly, my education uh, into osteopathics for musculoskeletal issues makes a lot of sense, <laughs> whereas um, manipulating one joint uh, to affect the whole Everything body helps. doesn't seem to make as much sense to me. So um, that being yeah. said, if I'm the same camps there. Well, it, 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 it segues into the first um, uh, discussion piece is, is as, as long as we all use the same tests, like we should all agree on the same tests. I personally don't care, you know, what gets the job done, because especially if I'm not getting it done, meaning if somebody does something that I don't understand or something that doesn't uh, fit into the rubric on how I think, it can't be bad like it, because if I'm not getting it done, how dare I think somebody else can't get it done. But I do think we should use the exact same test. So if, if, if somebody thinks that cracking T10 is going to change liver enzymes, well, how about we just measure liver enzymes the same way? That doesn't seem to happen nearly as much. What, what, I mean, because you're doing things as in functional medicine and in different countries that in America is not unheard of. But it's not it's 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 not it's not simple to access those things. Well, I mean, some of it's pretty straight. I, mean, I like where you're going with the test because even just testing, like your typical blood test that you get at a physical, like your fasting glucose, your HbA1c, your lipid panel, like these are still important tests even for athletes just to determine health status. And sometimes, you know, to your point, we we need to be on the same page of the test that we're running because it's nice to take these deeper dives into other all these other biomarkers that we can run. But, you know, we, we oftentimes we, we look deeper down that rabbit hole before we even have a good sense of what's in front of us. And so I think that idea of and when you go from team to team, as you've seen, there's a big discrepancy between the tests that one team might run that they think are important compared to another team that might run, you know, a whole different set of panels. And so I think that's where there's a nice discussion to be had on. And you, let's all agree on or try to have that common language on what's important for 
yeah, athlete and, health, athlete performance, and then we kind of go from there. Well, uh, obviously, you uh, when when we were all together at Canada Basketball, you um, would would be um, you know the the primary decision maker. Uh, a lot of people obviously still ask how we put it all together, and it's very very simple. Everybody is equal. Some people are more replaceable than others, and some people just do. We, everybody just does different things. So, for instance, you're you're determining certain markers. But then we would simply use different strategies to affect those markers. Um, so you, you wouldn't have, because I would be the one typically to carry out a lot of those things yeah. um, uh, when, when you're not around. But those tests and those values uh, were always, you know, were, were decided. And we all just do it because the, like we would always say, like, no one's in charge. The system is in charge. And mm -hmm. then the, the human that has that particular expertise, I, that they carry the football. And yeah. everybody, everybody blocks, but the system decides. So when the, if the system values things like blood work uh, and anything that goes into somebody's mouth, or um, probably not recently, but when we were budgeted heavier, we were doing bags, we were doing IVs, we yep. were doing all these things. Um, and that's where I started, not started, because obviously you know I'm very close with Sunil Jain, uh, but yeah. to be to have this level of exposure to to all of these things. But when you mention teams again, whether it's teams or general population, um, I think when you know just because a, a particular expertise uh, sets a standard, that doesn't mean they're the only people that can affect that standard, right? That that's I think yeah. that's very important. Um, I think that whereas, was pretty cool. Yeah. With, I was just gonna say with the setup that we had of just being able to. Like to your point, you didn't have to be able to execute from everyone else's expertise, but just being able to see the problem through their lens and understand it. Yeah. Creates, you know, that's the system that well, you sort of talk about. And then executing the actual strategy, depending on what was most impactful for the person, is yeah. then it makes it more straightforward, right? Well, I, I think um, obviously there are always checks and balances based on individual roles. And basically, I don't even need to talk so much about Canada basketball because even when you work individually, with a person, this is the, the model that, that goes through, where we, we, didn't, we wouldn't value uh, a measure unless it could be positively impacted in six ways. So let's say um, it's something incredibly traditional and in an, in an elite young basketball player, A1C is typically not a, is something that is gonna ring a bell. But it, on general blood work, it would get measured. But let's just use that as an example since you mentioned it before. A1C, yeah. A1C could absolutely be affected through medical techniques. You could take medicine, and I'm sure there's some kind of something that a, that a, a highly uh, specific medical train. It can be affected by fitness, obviously. If, yeah. if somebody's A1C is elevated, we can manage it through some of these channels and, and how uh, adaptation, obviously nutrition, um, sleep. There's probably nothing that sleep can't positively <laughs> or negatively impact uh, psychology. Again, psychology and sleep is for everybody. And then load management, which may or may not deal with fitness. So we would mm -hmm. never choose something. So even though uh, I would not be the primary decision maker in, in deciding what we care about from your expertise, because you're not around all the time. And then I would carry out the nutrition piece uh, anyway. Uh, it, it's a, um, you know, that, that's really the, how the model uh, really can, can become very, very positively explosive where everybody just does what everybody else does. It, it's not a hard thing. Absolutely. I was going to dovetail off that to say, you know, that you mentioned psychology and I mean, you see this all the time, but you know, when you, when you guys be treating someone on the table, the conversations that you have with an athlete uh, and now all of a sudden these little pieces are coming out about actually how they feel after training or where their energy's at or where they're struggling with cravings at one in the morning eating a bag of oreos things that don't necessarily come out in the first glance when you're having mm -hmm. sort of a formal visit so i feel like that was always such a key part of the whole process was being able to you know just to sit with in those rooms with you guys and just the information that you guys would get just yeah. from putting your hands on guys and all of a sudden, you know, with that relationship, we're getting a little bit more information than we would in that first pass. Everyone, uh, everyone is a psychologist, family members, every, yeah. <laughs> and, and of course, uh, even though, you know, I, I think unfortunately, and, and it was never the case uh, with us given the, the two psychologists that we have, but in other organizations, the psychologist usually thinks they're the smartest person in the room. 
um, which would not be the case in Canada basketball. Um, but uh, the, the, every, everything, so they think they're the only one that knows this stuff. But clearly, psychology can be measured physiologically. You can, me you can do it through blood work. Um, and you can measure it through something if you believe, like we obviously had a very strong belief of for Omega Wave. Um, but it, so if you intervened with psychology, we should be able to measure it universally. Um, and, and Omega Wave would potentially answer that. But, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to measure, you know, serum levels of dopamine, which isn't even possible. Uh, but, but you could, but a positive talk therapy can be met if you feel better then there's some kind of yeah. neurotrans, it, it's, it's not, you can't dissociate anything from anything. And that's also why we can't blame one thing for uh, creating a solution either. If you can't blame it for causing a problem, you can't blame it for solving a problem either. That, yeah. that, I think that was something that, that was very, very, very universally accepted with, uh, with um, when we worked together. The beauty of complex problems, isn't it? There's just there's so many, yeah. there's so many avenues and we know that things are impacting other things. And, you know, you, yeah. we were always really good with kind of keeping the main thing, the main thing. And what are all these values telling us, but not getting lost and sort of, it's easy to get pulled in different directions, isn't it? With all the things we can actually, you know, quantify yeah, yeah. and, well, and here's, assess. Um, here, here's uh, um, the, the meat and potatoes. We'll see if we have enough time for all this, but based on what I what I suggested like when you're not around I wound up being the one that would execute yeah. a lot of basically the nutrition the nutrition piece um, and nutrition advice and then etc um, number two uh, being married to someone that champions these types of things over the last several years uh, it has resonated more to me but also um, when when I when I when things started to make a little bit more sense to me from a nutrition uh, or a I don't know what we're gonna call it if we need to call it functional medicine or humoral humoral and hormonal impact on the body if yeah. I'm doing something that that appears like let's say post surgical where the bell is ringing the loudest in a musculoskeletal component and, and let's say it's a knee surgery and and the quad is mush. And it's not getting to be, it, it's not, um, it's not responding at the speed. I would say only over the last couple of years, because people ask me all the time, like, hey, what are you getting into? What's your new thing? I'm like, nah, I'm just trying to put more keys on the key ring. Now the yeah. answer is very, very clear. My answer uh, is, is nutrition and blood work. And I don't expect to have the expertise of you or like my buddy Andy, or et cetera, et cetera. Um, but when I go back to that quad, I'm like, how, how much, how much, do you have any idea how much you eat? Uh, do you, like, how much pro, because if that quad is going to get bigger from doing whatever tried and true techniques, if you don't eat enough food and you, and or you don't eat enough protein, it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what we do in physical therapy. It doesn't matter what we do in training if you don't eat. I mean, this is simple. I used to just say this to women, like, you can't look like, you know, a bodybuilder unless you eat and take exogenous, yeah. exogenous hormones. But, but if, we, if we look at people that struggle putting on weight, gaining uh, or losing weight, we look at people that struggle from a rehab standpoint, and in fact, uh, or rehab, just by having surgery, you require significantly more calories. Uh, yeah. where, where nothing matters, you can't do it. Your, your shit won't work. And it would probably go the opposite. You could have a brilliantly dialed in you know, nutrition panel, and, and you, uh, and so whoever else says, oh man, that blood work looks nice. That's all awesome. And Get if, the you chef train in there. Like, yeah, if you train like an idiot, which we see probably more of that, um, it doesn't matter that like you won't achieve. Um, that's, that's something that I wanted to, to, to share with you. Whereas people that are really dialed in to training and, and therapy, you don't have the option to dissociate from nutrition, yeah. that's not, it, it's not an option. I, I took a call recently with a gentleman uh, who played rugby at a very, very high level. Um, he was still claimed to be around 200 pounds, but he's not an athlete so much anymore. Very, very competent therapist. Um, yeah. And uh, he, he took a consult with me and says, look, I just got into this long distance bike riding. It's like meditation for me. I said, all right, well, that's, that's your thing. Your <laughs> And he said, uh, you know, like one day a week is like a six hour bike ride. I mean, fuck, I don't sleep six hours. And, and, uh, and then he's like two other days, are like three hour, three hour bike rides. 
and he goes, I'm losing muscle. Like I'm getting smaller. Mind you, this is a, a big rugby dude. Yeah. And um, I'm like, okay. Um, so do you, so, so, you know, you know, he's like, no, you have no pain. Like, no, I'm just, I just feel like I'm getting older. I'm like, okay. Um, I'm pretty sure riding a bike is not the reason you're getting older, but like, like where, where are you at with nutrition? He's like, I don't even worry about it. Like, I just, I don't, I don't have any eyes on it. I said, okay, do you have any idea how much protein you eat? And he said 120 grams a day. I'm like, I think, I think we have our problem here because if you only have 120 grams, you're probably not even answering the first question, which is how much you have eat total. Um, where am I, yeah. am, I, am, I on, am I on the right boat with all this? Like, I don't think you can dissociate. So here's the per you're the person that would make those decisions on what they eat, how much they eat, maybe when they eat, if it gets to a higher level. I don't care what you do in training if you don't eat. Yeah, I mean, that's a great place to start, man. I mean, we got to just get enough bricks to rebuild the house. You know, if they're taking the bricks out faster than we're putting them back in, we're not going to recover from injury, which you mentioned before. And that's the one where you're, when appetite goes down, it's hard because you need just as much, you know, just as much protein to be able to recover, but you're not as hungry. And then you get the example of the cyclist. And it's you know, that same idea. If we can hit the daily total, if we can divide it through the day, it's amazing how not just for even muscle, but immune function and everything else that we need these building blocks for. And to go along with that, I mean, we're always talking about micronutrition. Well, the best way to increase your micronutrition is to consume sufficient protein, right? We see those rising in parallel. So that's such a nice place to start because if you can anchor that and sort of set that with your client or athlete, it really sets the foundation because after that, you're just leveraging energy via carbs or fats to be able to achieve, hey, maybe that guy wants to do the Tour de France where cyclists consume 18 grams of carbs per kg <laughs> on, on an intense day. Of course, they don't weigh very much because weight to power matters. Um, or you can go all the way down to a, a low day for a you know, premiership football or even a rugby player would be three to four grams per kg. So there's just this huge swing for carbohydrate that does need to be a little bit planned and purposeful. Because to your point, when the athlete's injured, we want to ramp down the total energy, but we still want the protein there. Yeah. And then when they're back to return to play, then we can ramp the energy back up. But what you were alluding to previously there was that when they get injured, everything comes down, the protein, the meal frequency, the total energy. And now we're, we're, you know, we're not in a good spot and it's likely going to take longer than it should to recover. The, uh, the analogy that I have started to use for post-surgical or injured and post-surgery makes a little bit more sense to most people. I'm mm -hmm. like, your, your, your activity level is, is, appears to be lower. But let's say if you have shoulder surgery, think of the car is, is, is idling at mm -hmm. four RPMs. So you have to feed that. Like it, it, because if you want new tissue to build, it has to come from somewhere. It doesn't just, it, <laughs> it needs you something. don't just, this is why, you know, um, cause I, I would say for, at least in my world, surgeries never fail. You know, like if you go to some slap, slappy, you know, in network loser, yes, you could get a bad surgery. I'm going to say most surgeries are perfect and there's just mm -hmm. something that, that is unequal after your, your rehab is garbage. you you, you you didn't train well enough. Like you don't have enough immune system function or hormonal function. Um, but if you don't eat when you're training, I mean, what, while you have surgery, this is your, is, where, how do you think that the tendon builds its stuff? Like, yeah. even if you don't take a scoop of collagen, like, how do you think this happens? So, so it, it helps put people into perspective. And, and I don't think, um, you know, again, uh, I'm always thankful for, for where, where these exposures, um, um, because I, I think what happens is when somebody has a high level of expertise, they think slash want that to always be how yes. the person gets better. <laughs> yeah. You, you get to score. The I got the answer. Every time. Yeah. yeah. So, so give me the ball uh, coach, give me the ball. Yeah, like if you do, if you do IVs, you're going to think IVs solve everybody's problem. And that's ludicrous. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, for me, the, the things that I do well, like it can't possibly be the answer for every single person. Um, and I, and I'm finding that if we, if we have, because now I have a better awareness of nutrition over the last, you know, four to five years, um, it, uh, and I, and I don't, I have no intention to ever have the level of expertise, you know, that, because I, I just don't, I don't have the repetitions. It's impossible. Um, but, but to think that that quad after knee surgery gets gigantic 
without eating significant amounts of food, like how would how would any how would any muscle get bigger? How does a bodybuilder get a bigger or a, a cyclist like you're saying? Like how does yeah. you have to, you have to eat? Like those are the building blocks. I think you just said of of how this stuff works. And and I think it gets confusing for the general public or practitioners who work with the general public because the fueling for an elite athlete is just so much higher that we often just think of like, well, that's going to cause a blood sugar issue or, you know, that would give me prediabetes. So that, that context part for the practitioners is so key because, yeah, depending on who we're working with, if it's a football player and you're up to seven to nine grams per kg of carbohydrates or just someone in the general public, the, you know, if they're trying to lose 30 or 40 pounds, then the total fueling is going to be lower, but we're still going to want to keep that protein up. So, yeah, man, it's, yeah. it's always interesting how context drives everything. And I love your point about, you know, always thinking that the thing that you've got to, to provide is the thing that we think is going to solve every problem, but yeah, it's sometimes ridiculous. it's a little part of the solution. Sometimes it's a big part of the solution, but it's a continuum, right? Well, that's uh, people will introduce somebody, but you all oh, like, what do you do? And I just look at Alan. Like, I hate talking about what I do because I'm like, yeah, I'm a physical therapist by title. Um, but obviously most people, some people don't even know I'm a physical therapist. They, they think I'm only a strength coach or fitness guy opposite. Mm -hmm. Some people have no idea that, that it, they just think I lift or something. Um, yeah. but, but I, when I, when I look to evaluate someone, um, Andy Galpin actually does a pretty good job of describing what I do. Um, because as I've helped him with some people, they're like, he expected answers the first time we ever connected, he expected answers that were very physical binary. related, yeah. uh, not even binary, but okay. like if it was training and rehab, T equals R. Yeah, T yeah. equals R it should be like T equals R equals N equals SL <laughs> equals the, yeah. the equation doesn't fit on the box. Yeah, not anymore. But it started that way. But you see yeah. what I mean? Like it, 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 it became um, like I'm like I try to look at not the opposite of of where, what I said. Where I think most people they they are so they're binary because they want their specialty to be what solves the problem. Yeah. That. And, and that, look, that, that's not, that, that's highly altruistic. I'm doing the opposite. I want to look at somebody, if I'm in charge and I'm going to manage their pro pro process, um, I want to find the stuff that I don't do. If you need yeah. surgery and I tell you you need surgery, there's a good chance you need surgery because I'm giving away money and I'm giving away the, the glory and the power of being the one that helped you solve your problem. Because if I can, if I can, uh, and, and again, this is what, how we would look at things, uh, you know, up until the last year in Canada basketball, um, it, it doesn't matter who does it. That, that's the thing. Like, uh, um, like I, I, if someone else can carry it out and on my recommendation, it has to be right. Meaning it's, it's noble, meaning, uh, it, and, and that's where, you know, in, in previous, previous years, um, you know, Jay Triano would say, like, look, you know, you know, I don't think you're telling me this stuff because you want us to lose. You, yeah. You're telling, <laughs> you're, you're giving me these recommendations on training load and, and physiology because you're smarter than me. And that's why I'm going to listen to you. Obviously, that, that sentiment is not shared by other people They but because they want to do it. They just want to do it their way. But at least from a yeah. performance standpoint, um, I, I have found that. If, if, if the recommendation is away from what you do well, it, it, it's like noble, like it has to be right. Yeah, you know, especially in a private yeah. sector where you're giving away money. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, it's all about solving the, the person's problem, the athlete's problem. Like what is the, how do we get to the finish line? How do we win the game? How do we get? And so, yeah, if you're a small part of that, a medium part of that, a big part of that, I think that was part of our success Canada basketball was that yeah. everyone yeah. was able to speak the similar language and, and wear different hats, which, you know, eight, nine years yeah. ago was kind of a new thing. Now, nowadays, much more common, which is cool. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, and then just get, getting the clients and athletes to, you know, over the finish line was yeah. enough. Yeah, I just right? found if, if, if um, I had a young lady that had a, um, I think she had some, like a pathological fracture, meaning it just for no reason, at least that, that she knew. And um, she got referred to me and I'm like, I could train you, but that's not what you're here for. Like, that's not, like, you're fine. Yeah. Like there's, you have a good foundation. I think you're better off, you know, if you have resources, you should go to see this person, this person, or this person to help maybe understand how this femur broke for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, uh, because I don't think there was no reason. Exactly, like, well, yeah, there's doctor, a reason. 
<laughs> my doctor said that that you should help. I said you squat well. Like you're not weak. Like you're, you know. Again, I can help you get better, but I don't know if that's. And, and she was like floored um, because I was basically sending her away. I said, no, I'm not sending you away. Like you seem like a nice person. I could I could train you <laughs> and, and 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 swipe your credit card. Um, yeah. But the, and that was probably more in the functional medicine space, not not necessarily nutrition. Um, yeah. I don't, so, um, but let let's let's get into um, um, the uh, what was it? Maybe a year, two two years? No, it was during the pandemic. You yep. and a few other folks uh, started to uh, put together something uh, related to getting this nutrition information uh, in the hands of more people, uh, and and maybe try and demonstrate. Not just do this, do this, do this. In this world, and you picked American football, um, but it, it could be any world, that, okay, you're going to do this, this, and this, but the reason we're doing this, this, and this is to support the, the training piece. It's not just to lose weight or get diesel. It's so that you can maintain the unique demands of this particular activity, which is really what we've been talking about. 100%. I mean, you know, nutrition has its roots in sort of bodybuilding and, and whatnot. And so still a lot of the language and things that we use comes from that, which, you know, does serve a purpose. But when we talk about athletes, as you know, I mean, football players have specific needs. So we have, you know, we've developed a football performance nutrition course. You know, we've got, you know, 10 different uh, lectures there working in pro football, working in NCAA. And it goes from everything from just understanding the demands, you know, what are the demands of the sport? How much energy do we really know football players are taking in? And from there, just like at Canada basketball, we try to run the breadth of not just the recovery, nutrition, and everything else, but as we get into supporting the brain, you know, concussion recovery, the mindset piece. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so it's been fun. We just had a summit with a bunch of speakers on. Um, and so people want to jump on. We're running the course this summer. We've got a, you know, I think we had over – almost a dozen NFL teams on the summit. Again, we got performance nutritionists and then sports scientists contributing. So it's been, it's been fun to be able to see as I'm joking here <coughs> to see the buy-in. You, you should get some uh, nutrition uh, advice as to why you're, you're getting so far. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, uh, but, but <clears throat> yeah, a couple, a couple years ago, I think it was just three presenters. Um, and then more recently you, you, you know, get, drink your water. I'll do the talking. The, uh, um, what, what else is new? The, the, um, that, so, and then, and then you had uh, a couple days, uh, of, of different speakers. Um, and I think that was trying to segue into a pretty grand event that you want to put together later this summer. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so we just had the first football performance nutrition summit. So we had 10 speakers. Yeah. Again, NFL, Bills, Dolphins, <clears throat> NCAA. And we're going to be building on that every year. So people can check that out. They can also jump in, you know, this summer cohort of the football performance nutrition. We'll have, again, speakers when does that on. Start? Yeah, when does that start? So when, when? Enrolling now. So you can check that out. If you go to performance nutrition podcast.com or drbubs.com forward slash athletes, you can get all that info. Again, we've got 10 modules over 12 hours of content. And then, you know, we're going to be twisting your arm to come on and, and provide some insights as well as we go through the fall. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it's been a great time to be able to connect all these different, you know, practitioners. And, again, try to really expand the breadth. We talk a lot about athlete health, um, the brain, mindset pieces, because, as you know, that's a pretty big part of this whole story of just how the athlete yeah. feels plays a big role in everything, right? So, No question. And, and, and it answers the people that ask me like, Hey, what are you, what are you trying to get into? What are you learning more about? This is the answer basically is heads down. And, but, but just like with anything, I don't care if the speakers share this global view because mm -hmm. I don't think it's a knock on them because you're saying if they work in the NFL, I, they basically don't, there, there's no team that puts this all together, that, that, that would be completely 100% false. Doesn't mean they're not a good nutritionist. It doesn't mean they're not good people, but there are zero teams that actually puts together medical, fitness, nutrition, load management, zero, zero. Um, so that doesn't mean the information that they have can't be put into that model. Uh, yeah. and so, and it's, it all starts with quality information. So, you, and it, so if you're a therapist, if you're a coach, this is a really good place to start to understand what people that are better at than you, like 
they're better at it than me. So I'm just going to follow what they say. They, they've done more repetitions. And then I'll try and take it and shape it into the context of yeah. what other people do. Because, you know, there's no way, like, so if I'm really good at whatever, well, if I do what you do first, maybe it makes what I do better. And then I do what somebody else does after. We now have this superhero vers version, um, <laughs> which, uh, which is um, which, where, where um, you know, that, that's, that's the value here. Like, you know, cause look, I, I've been, as you well know, part of having me, you know, involved a little bit, I deal with a lot of NFL players and, and yeah. they, they don't do <laughs> what, what the straight, what the nutrition person says um, because they don't have to. And it doesn't mean that the information isn't good. And if you can take the information and plug it into other places. So, so um, is it, is it the same 10 speakers? Is that, is that what it's going to be uh, coming up? So with the summit's already, Summit's already gone. If you want access, people can gain access. We had, uh, again, the, the nine speakers there, which was great. And it really is what we talked about before. Now more practitioners being able to see problems through different lenses. So S&C yes. coaches on there, being able to then see what the nutritionist is sort of seeing. But to your point, not necessarily trying to be to that level, but we even upskilling to a certain level still solves a lot of the, the issues that someone's going to see, as you know, right? Like knowing a little bit pretty much gets you 80% of the way home. And so it's been great to see more people you know, wanting to understand things from all those different points of view. And, uh, you know, we have a module all about, you know, mindset, building relationships, that whole piece of, because just as you alluded to, the athlete that you always want to impact the most sometimes is the most talented one who doesn't think about it at all. They don't think maybe nutrition or whatever it is, is that important. Yeah. But as the staff, you think, geez, this is actually the missing piece of this individual. So now the problem becomes, the psychology mindset, you know, relationship side, how do we connect enough to be able to influence this individual or that individual's team to be able to let them know that, Hey, this thing's actually quite important. So, you know, yeah. all those soft skills that, you know, you really only get through reps, just as you mentioned, right? I mean, some of these soft skills are not things you're going to learn in a textbook. And so while we got all the evidence-based info on, on fueling for American football, we're trying to level up some of those soft skills that a practitioner can, you know, in your domain could do or a performance psychologist could do with just how we can communicate with someone to just start to move the needle a little bit more because, you know, as you know, it's, it's busy, it's fast, it all comes pretty quick and, and people working on the ground, there's only so much bandwidth. So you're really just trying to make as big an impact as you can. No, I think if, if we were to round it all off, um, if something is not working, like, do you, have, you, have you put any eyes on nutrition and sleep? Because you and, and they might even be more important because you can't put something in somebody's mouth and you can't make them go to sleep. Like you, uh, yeah. And those two are usually the, the buckets that they get a lot of run because you can't you can't nearly control. If someone's on my table, I can do whatever and they're going to acquiesce. Um, yeah. Put your arms up and you put the catapult on them. They'll probably acquiesce unless it's in the NBA. You know, it's uh, um, but that that's that's where you start with some of the basic information uh, and then you start to just be like, even if you don't execute it, you can advocate for the person. And that, that's really where I think I'm at, where you have to be able to tell people, listen, you know, you, you need to get into this. It's, I know you're, you're committed to physical therapy to get your knee better, but it's not, you're going to think I suck if you continue to think it's cool to eat 1300 calories. I mean, that's just how it, that's just how it, that, that's the, the, the global easy message, I think. Yeah, it's like the classic, uh, I guess, I mean, Paul Oakley might have said it before, but there was a cooking show on here where, you know, you get the chicken wing from the from the fast food place and you snap it in half and it breaks pretty easy, right? Versus the, versus the one that was uh, running around and outside and eating proper food. So, that you know, we're not, <laughs> we're no different, right? We need to fuel right. a certain way to be able yeah. to be strong and resilient. So, right. yeah, man. Yeah. So, um, per performance nutrition podcast. You can go back and, and see everything, and, and um, this this was this was something I, I don't I don't remember if I viewed every single one, but I think I saw a good at least more at least the 60, 70 percent of them, and I'm just listening, you know, I'm just you know it's it's because uh, I, I I I have no I couldn't care less who they do it with or because most of the time it's exaggeration, but 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 the information is what's the the crucial crucial piece. Um, so, so I hope, uh, I'd like to see people get, give that a go. And, uh, does this one have an exam? The first one had an exam. The, the, we the, we the, got, the, we got exams on there. Um, all right, good, good. we got, we got, got the videos, we got discount too for people if they want to jump in. 
So there you go, man. So, but yeah, sorry, I know when, uh, when, uh, when we post there's a lot this, of quizzes now. When when we post this, you'll uh, you'll you'll chime in with whatever the discount is, or if you want me to email it to everybody, if it's something for people that that are in the list, then um, we'll I, I would I would be very happy to to promote it because it's it's the right thing for people to start to get into. Awesome, buddy. I appreciate All it, man. Right, man. And again, uh, stay st we'll keep staying warm over there. I'm gonna do the same over here. Yeah, and we'll I'll, I'll, I'll twist your arm we'll as far to get you to contribute. Go find some air conditioning in the mall. <laughs> I just built a, a, an office in my backyard. All my kids are in there playing. I'm like, what's going on here? All right. I'm upstairs. Cool. So this is this is my life. All right. Well, keep at it, man. We'll talk to you. Take care, buddy. All right. Bye-bye.